Good morning guys, good morning internet, good morning YouTubers. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is EJ and I'm back again with another artwork for us to take a look at and dissect and talk about and yeah, this is my narrated time-lapse video series. And this time we are doing 3D, um, so yeah, I'm taking a little break from my 2D usual stuff and I'm doing a sculpt. So we are in Blender today. And yeah, Whew. we are in Blender today. And in Blender, we're doing um, something very special for me or uh, a specific study is what I'm doing in Blender today. Uh, I've talked about studies and how typically I do studies or typically when I do studies, I, I just go and aim for likeness and just kind of exercise my eyes and whatnot. That's typically my approach. Uh, lately, I've been doing studies where I have a specific reason for doing that particular study. And in the case of this particular artwork that I'm doing, this little project that I'm doing, I actually have a very specific um problem slash issue that I wanted to address and the issue that I'm trying to address with this particular sculpt is likeness um yeah <laughs> trying to capture the likeness in the sculpt um when it comes to doing studies of people and um painting people doing portraits I uh, you know I'm fairly decent with capturing the likeness um I haven't really been sharing some of my acrylic portrait paintings because, you know, when I do my acrylic portrait paintings, they are for my family and friends and, you know, as such, I respect their privacy, so I typically don't share it. But if you were or if you happen to have seen some of my portraits or if you were happen to see some of my acrylic portraits, you can see that I'm pretty good with the likeness thing, especially when it comes to do 2D stuff. Um, I actually do have some other studies of famous actresses, like I did a study of uh, Ellen Page and I did a study of Rachel McAdams. I'm probably going to post those in my portfolio sometime soon. They used to be in my portfolio. I took them out and I might bring them back again uh, just in time uh, for me to talk about this whole likeness thing. Anyways, my whole point in saying all of that is that when it comes to 2D, I pretty much, you know, I could pretty much get it, you know. I mean, sometimes I fail, but even masters fail in likeness sometimes. And But for the most part, you know, I'm fairly successful when it comes to 2D. But when it comes to 3D, I am immensely horrible at it. And I learned that um, firsthand last year when I did a sculpt. Of one of a gym's uh, drawings um, the oranges sculpt that I did uh, that I posted in my YouTube channel a while back um, anyways I had issue with trying to capture the likeness of a gym's drawings I mean when I did the sculpt it looked like the girl is post like the girl or it didn't look like a girl. I, I meant like the pose was very similar to the girl. The the dress was pretty spot on. Uh, I did the braids and the hair and yeah, they're all kind of spot on. But the face, the face just did not look like it. I ended up making mine more realistic and Ajem's drawings is more stylized. It's more Disney character cartoony look. Um, And... Initially, I picked Ajem's uh, drawings to make a sculpt out of because I thought that the whole uh, cartoon thing would be much easier for me to work it, but I was so wrong about it. <laughs> like, I'm not joking. Cartoon stylized is just as difficult to capture likeness-wise just as much as it is in real life. So... I decided to really need some practice with likeness. <laughs> this is the whole point of this whole exercise is to capture the likeness of this painting by Christian Sable. Anyways, I've had such a long introduction. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump on and talk a little about what's been going on in the screen. And then I'll go back and talk some more about uh, Christian Sable and this whole likeness issue thing. But okay, so in Blender, I started out. Uh, with a ball which is now that's how most people start out with their sculpt a square cube that is 
you know, round it off into a ball, you know, you'd add uh, a subdivision modifier on it to get some polys in there. Then once it's nice and good, you kind of use a move brush to kind of just, you know, put that ball or basically move that ball into a general shape. And so that's what I did it was that I used the move brush um, slash elastic move brush blender and now has a new brush called elastic move brush which is really awesome by the way um, and I think I got the name wrong I don't think it's elastic move brush but the concept is that the move brush uh, is a little bit more elastic um, anyways without going too deep into it I use that brush basically to just kind of shape my ball uh, into the general shape and Really when you're stretching that ball out all you really need to do is just kind of uh, Grab the bottom part of the ball so that you could you know uh, Create the draw line, you know, so you kind of just Grab the bottom part of the ball and like pull it so that you'll form the jaw And then you kind of squish the sides of the ball so that you'll have a much narrower face instead of a rounder face and then you kind of pull the middle part of the front of the face so that you can have the nose so those were like the basic general shape that I did uh, that I kind of pulled and pushed just to get this general shape of um, of the face then after doing that I would take um, oh I just looked at the sides of the face it looks like the back part of the sides of the face were still too wide and you just saw me pushed it in so that it's narrower um, but anyways, after using the move brush, what I typically do next is one of the clay brushes. It's either the uh, clay add-on um, or I forgot which clay it is. Um, but I liken it to, um, you know what, just for the sake of being correct, I'm going to pull up Blender real quick and <laughs> just look up the the brush name because I don't have the brush names straight off the top of my head so I'm going to pull up blender real quick and then take a look at all these brushes okay uh let me pull up sculpting and then let me pull uh this little dock out okay so the first brush that i use is the grab brush i was wrong there's the elastic deform that's it's not elastic move it's called elastic deform brush that's the first brush i use and then i do clay strips uh, there's a regular clay brush and then there's clay strips i use the clay strips to basically um define the general shape more um when i'm working on this uh, sculpt I typically you know do it fast do it quick just to get the general shape in I, I try not to get too bogged down with details because before I used to get really bogged down with details um, but yeah I just kind of like do general shapes at first um, and then I kind of just you know form the general shape that I'm seeing you know where the cheeks are and where the jawline are and where the lips are and then of course the nose I, I use the elastic to form to push that out um, and then once I got all that I added the ears as a separate object and actually I'm adding all the other pieces that I needed as separate objects uh, so one of the objects I added was the neck and then I added another object for the chest then I add another object for all the clothing or for all the pieces of clothing that you see I added objects for it so one for the fur one for that little lace area right underneath the fur um, and then of course the veil and then there's a little piece of clothing underneath the veil that I added as well uh, so all of those are separated as model separate models when you do the polygonal modeling like you see me do right now um, my typical suggestion is to just keep it loose, keep it simple, keep it blocky, which is you see that all my objects are very blocky right now. I'm not very much concerned with getting all the shape down and getting all the shape right because for me, speed is kind of like an essential part of this whole thing. I really wanted this to be a speed sculpt. Um, and for the most part, it is a speed sculpt because it's all under five hours. Uh, I finish all of this in five hours. 
But as soon as I have all those objects in, I added extra pulleys by doing um, the subdivision mo subdivision modifier. You guys can do the multi ras if you would like, but I use subdivision modifier if I'm not wrong. And then I sculpted it uh, separately from the face, of course, and then it, um, you can see me work on the neck and the chest area right now. So I, I just do general sculpting with the clay strip. You know, not too many details or anything, but just like the general idea. And then what I did was I combined the neck, the chest area, and the face, which you just saw me just combine the face just now for to the rest of the uh, body. But I combined them using the bool tool, which is this Boolean tool plugin that is that actually comes uh, for free with Blender. So I basically use that uh, to combine the ears, the neck, the chest area, and the face. So I have like one piece of object that I could work with. Um, and then after that, I'm going to spend some time uh, modeling, sculpting the clothes. And of course, I um, kept this loose as well for the most part like i didn't like super uber detailed it and whatnot so but yeah that's where we're at right now uh i just got finished pretty much generally sculpting the face uh you know not really doing the details yet um and then now i'm gonna work on the fur and on the fur i decided to go i decided to just sculpt it instead of using the hair uh particle effects that just came out with Blender 2.82. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to sculpt it. But anyways, we could talk real quick about Christian Sable um, while the rest of the scene is playing. Um, Christian Sable, there's really not much to know about him. Uh, not a whole lot is known about him. I don't really think a whole lot of pieces was made by him. Or he didn't really make a whole lot of pieces. He did a lot of portraits. And the thing I love about Christian Sable is that he is uber, uber realistic. I mean, even before Chuck Close and Don Eddy and all the photorealists from the 60s ever came on board, way before Norman Rockwell, who uses the photographs for his um, paintings, there was Christian Sable. And Christian Sable is so uber realistic when it comes to his paintings. Um... I have done a study, a 2D study of this particular painting of his. Uh, this painting is called Portrait of an Old Lady. And let me tell you, man, <laughs> I mean, trying to do a study on this piece is difficult because of all those wrinkles, all those wrinkles. There's just so much minute details. Like right now we're looking at the screen. You can't really see them because the, the lady is so far and so small in scale. You can't really see the minute detail that Christian Sable put on there, but this piece is immensely detailed. And I love it, love it, love it, love it. I love, I love all his work actually, and he does a lot of portraits. Uh, all the pieces that has survived of his work are all portraits, and I, I'm really wanting to dive more in deep, uh, dive in deeper on his work, and do more studies of it. So yeah. But anyways, I'm just going to let the video play for now, uh, and then I'll catch you guys uh, once like the general sculpting phase is done, and then I'll talk some more about my likeness issue and what I've been doing so far in the video.
Okay, so while I'm working on the eyes, I'm gonna go ahead and talk real quick about some of the problems I've been having when it comes to school. Um, one of the biggest problems I've been running into when I do my sculpts is the eyes. Like I have, I have such a huge problem with it. And one of the problems I've been running into when it comes to like sculpting the eye is that, you know, when it comes to 2D, I know how big the eye should be. Like, you know, the face should be like five eyes across. Like I know that much, right? But the problem with that statement is that, you know, the five eyes across takes into account only the visible part of the eye. Um, so when it comes to like the non visible part, like I don't know how big my eye should be in regards to like everything else. You know, because when I try to make my eyes just like, if when I try to make my spear like strictly like five spears across the face, it doesn't work. Like it feels like the eye is too small and then trying to wrap all the eyelid around it doesn't feel right. So like I end up making my, my eyeball, you know, a little bigger, but then sometimes I would just go oversize and it would be just so big that it looks like my eyes is bulging out. Like you can see it right now in the screen. It feels like my eyes is like way too jutted out, way too far out. Like it, it does not feel natural. So that's like one of the problems I've been running into is the eye thing. Um, I've looked up to some tutorials on it on YouTube and the technique that I use particularly for this piece suggested that uh, I separate modeling the eye from the, from the face. Um, initially, like earlier, you saw me try to sculpt the eye out on my own as part of the face, but it wasn't working. So I decided to scratch it out and then bring in this eyeball and do this whole separate modeling of the eyeball and the eyelid and then I you know added them onto the face right uh, so I learned that technique from YouTube you know but even when I applied that technique on YouTube I was still having issues on how well to define the eyes or how how big should the eye should be you know so again going back into the earlier statement that i have about my likeness and how i was attempting to to do likeness on this particular 3d piece i know that for a fact uh the eye is one of the reasons why i just couldn't nail the look of the lady because if you personally ask me what my personal assessment of my piece is is that i'm i'm like really far off like i, I kind of somewhat got the likeness of the of the portrait you know and honestly like you know if someone else was to take a look at it i could easily see them say oh they look like their sisters right you know like they have enough facial similarities that they look like my school that my school look like a sister of christian sable's portrait of an old lady you know they look like they could be sisters but if I ask the same person who would say, yeah, they, they look like their sisters or something. If I ask them, well, is it the same person? Uh, they, they may say yes. They may say uh, no. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, likeness wise, like I don't think I nailed it. Um. The eyes was it's an issue which has always been an issue you know I, I really need to do like a separate study on the eye and just practice on the eye itself without having to worry about the whole face um, the other thing that I kind of had issue with was um, the general shape of the face sort of the general shape of the face I kind of nailed down but I think on mine it cheeks are a little bigger um they kind of bulged out more so um that might kill that might have killed the likeness um of the piece um so yeah those two things are really i think was killing my portrait or my killing my sculpt 
of uh, this particular painting. Like, I mean, looking at it, I mean, you can see it right now. It's kind of close to the painting, but not very close. You know, like there's still a lot of things that are off with it. Um, the nose I, I got, I, I think I pretty much got the nose fairly right on. Um, the mouse is about the mouse, the mouth, the mouth is about the same as the portrait. Um, like the size of it and the general shape of it is right about the same as the portrait. Uh, the expression though, I think is a little off. Like if you look at Christian Sable's painting, um, it looks like, like, uh, the, her lady is jovial, you know, like her lady looks like she's in a good mood or something mine just looks like she's annoyed <laughs> so I, I was thinking that it might have something to do with the mouth like maybe it was frowning too much or something and I tried to fix it and it's fixed for the most part like the general shape of the mouth is just about the same as the shape of the painting but there's still something a little off about that so so yeah, <laughs> those are all my self critique about the likeness. It kind of looks like the lady doesn't kind of look like the lady, you know? It looks like the sister of the lady, but if it is the lady, like I don't know, like there's something off about it that that I didn't quite get, you know? But as a general exercise, I think it was fun, you know? I mean, it was different than most exercises I do because a lot of the exercises I've been doing have been trying to copy, like, Disney-looking characters. Like I said, I did Ajem's uh, character. And then after that, I did Doc Draws, uh, when the Doc Draws drawing, which is also cartoony. Um, this is, like, my first attempt at doing a painting of a, re a realistic painting, an uber-realistic painting. So, you know... For a first attempt, I would have to say, yeah, it, it went very well. So, yeah. Likeness issue is still an issue, but I guess I'll just get better with more practice and whatnot. But, yeah. But, anyways, this is my favorite part. Like, the wrinkles. It's pretty easy. Um, I just pretty much just used the detailing brush for this one. Oh, wait. Let me, let me double check the name. <laughs> uh, I need to make sure the name is correct. It's Draw Sharp. I used the Draw Sharp uh, brush. To just kind of um, make all this uh, wrinkle part. So yeah. I was running into issues with this because, you know, I wanted to preserve like a certain amount of polys in, on, the, on the bus. Like I didn't want to add too many polys. So I had to be very, very careful about how I approached this. Um, I didn't want to do the whole remesh thing because remeshing it would have added more polys in areas that I didn't need the polys. So really the best approach for me to working on these details was the dynamic topology. Um, but the problem was that I did you couldn't really, you know, use dynamic topology unless you use like a brush. <laughs> Which means like if I had used a clay strip brush to add more pulleys, then that would mean that I'm changing the surface. And I was just kind of hoping like there's some sort of brush that would add pulleys that wouldn't deform the surface. But <laughs> no such brush exists. So uh, yeah, maybe I could request that for some time in the future. But yeah. Um, so I guess a uh, general piece of advice that I could get for people who are getting into like sculpting and stuff, uh, especially digital sculpting. Um, my best advice I could give you is to just keep your tool set simple for the most part. I would suggest using a lot of the get the move brush slash elastic deform brush to make your general shapes. Then once you get your general shapes, you come in with either the clay or the clay strips to just kind of define some things. Uh, a little bit more and you don't want to get bogged down with details early on because or you don't want to start on details early on because if you start on details early on like way too much then yeah it would be just a fighting battle um so yeah uh just keep everything blocky and loose um for the most part
So I'm almost close to finishing this piece. Um, so I guess I'll just say my final words. Um, but yeah, this is close to being done. You can see me work on the column um, so that I can have a base for which my bust can sit, my head bust. Um, and then after that, it's pretty much just straight to rendering this thing out, which obviously is not part of this video because <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's kind of like boring to watch and nothing's really going on in terms of actual workflow But uh, yeah, so that was my sculpt um, Hopefully I could have given you a few advices on how to approach your sculpt um, Keep things loose keep things general at first and then slowly refine uh, Don't get started on details too much or else you'll fight you're gonna end up fighting a losing battle uh, and most importantly, I guess, uh, have fun because, <laughs> yeah, um, that's what I love about revisiting Blender every now and then is because doing sculpts, it, it's definitely fun. So, yeah, anyways, this is my study of Christian Sables painting. Thank you guys for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night. Mm -hmm.